Hi. Hi, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for the organizers for having me here, for Goose and Monica to do such a great job. I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure <laughs> after <laughs> these two presentations. Um, thank to all of you for being here today. You look beautiful. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and honor to be on this stage. Uh, I'm Valeria Val V, call me as you want. I'm a designer. Um, I've been promoted since uh, I sent my bio. bio. I'm an interim CEO now. Um, my uh, amazing business partner had a baby, so I am uh, covering her steps as a CEO right now. Um, for the people listening to the presentation, um, I am a relatively short woman with long brown hair and a black and white dress. And my pronouns are she and her. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about designing for trust. Um, and to start this, I'm going to tell you a little bit, how did I get here? Uh, the question that Joshua asked us earlier today. Um, I end up here because I was sick of being a human-centered designer and just sell more products. So I decided to join IF, which is um, the strategy and design agency, probably the only strategy and design agency specializing in trust. We are based in London, working globally. Um, we work at the intersection of data, design, technology, really helping organizations build more trustworthy products and services. We've done this for the last eight years or so, um, really helping organizations on some of the most challenging and hardest technology and data um, ambition out there. Uh, we do this because trust really matters. I think Monica briefly touched upon it. Trust is really important. It's really at the base of how we live and learn and live and love and play. Um, but technology is just making it really complicated, very quickly at a crazy pace. Can I trust? For example, the hotel that scanned my passport, um, can I trust them that they're going to use the data about me in the right way? That they're not going to get hacked in two years and my passport is going to be sold to, in the dark web? I don't know. Uh, can I trust this Tinder profile is real or AI generated? Am I going on a date with a robot or a human being? Um, why would I care reading the TNCs of an app that a restaurant is pushing me to download to pay the damn bill? I don't know. How, how can I know that I can trust this interaction? How can I know what are the consequences of this interaction? Hmm? It's not working. The reality is that when we deal with technology, we always deal with potential harm and risk. Uh, French cultural theorist and uh, philosopher Paul Virilio, um, one of his key concepts is that technology cannot exist without um, the potential for accident. So every time, like, every time you invent a technology, uh, risk is inherently linked to it. Um, if you invent the ship, you invent the shipwreck. If, uh, if you invent electricity, you invent electrocution. Harm, risk, Unintended consequences are absolutely normal. So every time we use a new technology, like the beautiful you know, new services that we use every day to live and love and learn and play, um, there's more risk and more harm. And there is potentially diminishing trust. Um, so yeah, we, we, we use technology from like messages to AI every day. But few of us really know how this technology works. No one knows really what are the risks and arms. No one knows how this impacts our lives, truly. And digital products and services are still very opaque and untrustworthy. And trust, when misplaced, can be really, really dangerous. I'm going to give you a couple of examples um, hopefully, I'm not getting you too depressed. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of moments to read this, and I'm going to read it out loud, uh, out loud for the people listening to this presentation. 918 prosecutions, job losses, bankruptcy, divorces, prison sentences, suicide, statutory inquiry, 80-plus conviction overturned, 
2,500 claims to compensation scheme and 100,000 plus compensation to convicted individuals. What I'm showing on screen now is just an example of misplaced, misplaced trust that really led to financial er errors, unfair conviction, and immense reputational damage. For the people based in the UK, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, for the rest of the world, I'm talking about the UK post office Horizon IT system scandal. The Horizon IT system was responsible for accounted losses between, listen, 1999 to 2015 which is a very long period of time. But postmasters and postmistresses were erroneously blamed for theft, fraud, and false accounting. Um, this is the picture of the, some of the postmasters finally winning the case uh, after 20 years. In these 20 years, the software was considered trustworthy, while actually it had major flows that provided like, shortfalls in the account of the post offices. So for 20 years, the software was considered right and trustworthy, while the people were not. It's one, like trust was misplaced and led to disaster consequences, is one of the most significant miscarriages of justice in the UK. But let's look at some other example, maybe a little bit less depressing. Um, this is just one of the many examples I could have picked. One of the many Gen AI chatbots that started hallucinating and created like, some very funny uh, results. Uh, DPD is a package uh, delivery company in the UK. Guess what? They decided it was a great idea to just implement a beautiful Gen AI chatbot. The chatbot was incredibly creative. Uh, one user was able to lead it to uh, swear, composing haikus and uh, basically like criticizing DPD and calling itself useless. So how can I trust this chatbot is telling me something wrong or right? Like not everybody can discern what is right or wrong, but uh, this is just one of the many beautiful examples. I could have picked many more, but this is one of my favorites. Another great example where like trust is placed in weird places uh, in the US, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's happening outside the US, people started noticing their insurance premium going up without apparent reason. Why? Well, cars are very much computers nowadays. And when you install a new feature or a new app in your beautiful car, you might not realize that your automaker has a, like a deal with a data broker and that they are collecting detailed driving data. Detailed driving data means they know every time you, you push your brakes a little bit too fast or a little bit too late. Uh, so they're collecting your data and from you and other millions of people, and they're sharing it with insurance companies. Uh, the existence of this partnership is nearly invisible to you and other drivers. Because you're just like, the consent is just obtained in fine prints, and you're just like clicking, clicking, clicking. You just want to, I don't know, look at how many miles your cars run on an electric instead of fuel. And uh, so they're using deceptive patterns to, to collect data about you. Uh, is this a trustworthy experience? Probably not. By the way, if you're interested in this topic, uh, Mozilla has done a report. Uh, just to tell you the name of the, rep like the name of the article they shared when they uh, published the report a few months back was uh, cars are the worst product category they ever reviewed on privacy. And they review a lot of products every year. Um, last example, obviously I'm going to shoot on Meta, <laughs> come on. Um, I started, but as many other companies, Meta is just one example, I have nothing against them. But uh, they started implementing their Meta AI assistant in some countries, not in Europe, mostly in the US at the moment. Um, they started embedded in a number of product and services, um, mostly Facebook, WhatsApp and Instagram. Can, people can do a number of things, including um, chatting and have a personal assistant kind of thing. Because this new feature is kind of naturally embedded on existing produ uh, products, there isn't really like a clear onboarding. So the terms of use are buried under multiple clicks. There is no clear explanation of the harms and the risk and the, li the limitations. Um, there isn't really a clear way or straightforward way for you to opt out of your data being used to train the model especially for people outside Europe. Um, so, so this is just another case, again, to use deceptive patterns to collect data. 
last but not least, can I mention that you know Instagram is most Instagram Messenger is mostly used by teenagers? This uh, function is unencrypted. Does a teenager know what th that means? Uh, th do they know that maybe it's not a great idea to share stuff on an un unencrypted uh, messaging app? Um, so it is presented as a very friendly and harmless new feature, but there are lots of risk and unintended consequences. So what's the impact of this frictionless onboarding without proper understanding of risk? Over the year, lots of user experience folks, like me, guilty, um, we, really, we really pushed to do more and more seamless and effortless and painless interaction. Everything needed to be not just easy, but even enjoyable and delightful. But wait a minute, is this right? Is this the right thing for people to just like say yes to whatever just because it's convenient and easy? Um, we believe that making tech-enabled product and services even more usable and seamless and frictionless is no, long, no longer going to work. We need to start designing for trust. We need to be able to trust this digital product and services as well. So it's about showing the risk and limitation, what tech and data can do. It's about empowering the humans to make decisions that make sense for them. And it's all about making sure that uh, they can take, they can evaluate if the compromise makes sense for them and for the people they care about. So we've been obsessed with this, like, let's make it easy to use, making things like convenient, uh, putting a facade in front of like wobbly technology, obscure decision making, uh, data getting collected in shady ways, and people's rights being violated left and right. And it's really about time to start thinking about how can we help people that, um, so they can evaluate um, if a product or a service is worth the risk. People need to understand what's happening in the back, so they can, they can understand pros and cons, make safe choices that empowers them. Because um, this stuff in the back, the potential ship, shipwreck, as I was saying, the potential electrocution, is not going away. It's not going to go away. Like regulation is catching up and things are getting better. But us, people in this room, designers, people working in like policy product, we can play a fundamental role. It's really time to start designing to, for trust with intention. In a more complex and short world, as Gus was saying, in a poly crisis, companies they need to do more than just provide seamless, delightful experiences. It's if they want to succeed, they need to be able to be trustworthy. Uh, the title of my presentation is Designing for Trust. Myth busting, you cannot design for trust. Sorry. Trust, trust is, a, is an outcome. Trust is what you get at the end. Uh, I cannot force someone to trust me. But just to give an example, I left my daughter last, yesterday morning um, promising her that I will be back. And I cannot force her to trust me. But I can show up tomorrow with a fluffy penguin, as she requested, and as I promised, demonstrating to her that I can be reliable and I can be, uh, you know, she can trust me because I, sh I will show up as I told her. And organizations, they can do the same. They, they need to be able to demonstrate that they can be trustworthy. And that can mean meeting expectation or being accountable. So trustworthiness, which is the quality of being deserving trust, is perhaps more important um, because it can be designed and it can be measured. Um, so yeah, consistent demonstration of trust, trustworthiness over time is what we do at IF. Unfortunately, I'm running a little bit out of time, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of the overview of what the hell does it mean to design for trustworthiness. So we distill trustworthiness in a few components. Um, here on the right, you can see the properties that are the one that makes people feel safe, empowered, and in control when they use uh, tech or data-enabled uh, product and service. Um, so we have accountability, transparency, and uh, participatory as some of the properties that a product or a service needs to have. They overlap with one another, um, but yeah, they're basically like ways that can inform the user experience. Um, we say that this, are, this is just a starting point. This is a framework. It evolves every three months. So every three months, you'll see a new version of this. But we help a number of organizations working in this space 
Uh, for example, just to show you um, how transparency can show off, we helped DeepMind uh, launching a new product that was using data in a very novel way that was potentially really scary for people. So we helped them understand how they could use the discharge letter as a key moment where you want to explain how data about you has been used. Why the discharge letter? Because when you're in a hospital, you have 99 priorities, your data is necessary one, but when you're feeling better and you're ready to go home, that's a key moment where you can empower people to decide what to do with data uh, that has been collected about them and maybe help them understand what they can do uh, with their data and research. I am going to skip this because I'm running out of time, uh, but this is, as I said, is very much work in progress. Uh, Emerging, it, designing for trust is an emerging space. So we say these are our strong opinion loosely held. If you have ideas, questions, come to me, find me on, online, on LinkedIn and whatever. But just to give you a, a glimpse of hope, uh, to make it easier for everyone uh, to get started on this journey, we have an open source catalog of uh, design patterns for trust and trustworthiness available online. We curated, we publish new patterns. It's open to everyone. You can take it and implement it in your organization tomorrow. Please do. Uh, it's available at catalog, spelled the British way, uh, projectaboutif.com. Thank you so much. Are you ready to design for trust? Thank you.